see at Council for Responsible Nutrition, same members. They have lots of multi-level marketing companies. Same members, okay? And they're serving their members' needs. They're saying, CRN is saying, yay, Codex is coming. It's going to protect us from those dangerous vitamins and minerals and herbs. And CRN is saying, it's fine. Go to sleep, lullaby, and good night. Everything's fine. And they use a report that they commissioned at a reputed cost of $800,000. A report, Sidley, Austin, Brown, and Root, a law firm in Washington, wrote a report for them. And it said, lullaby, and good night. Everything's fine. It won't have an impact on the United States. Everything's fine. Sidley, Austin, Brown, and Root has one major client whose name you might know, Merck. Merck. Now, it's entirely possible that NNFA just did a spectacularly bad job of due diligence, or not. Anyway, the report says everything's fine, everything's dandy, no problem, we've got Deche. Yeah, sure we do. Now let's talk about Australia. Remember five laws before Congress to overturn Deche. And you can write to Congress on the website. The click of a mouse. I call it riding the freedom mouse. It's called security. Now, Congress uses a multiplier of 13,000 to 1. Every email, fax, phone call, letter. Don't write letters. They get decontaminated. They never get to Congress. Every email, fax, and phone call counts as 13,000 constituent opinions. They figure that if you write a letter or send an email, there are 12,999 lazy lunks who can't bother to get to the computer terminal to do the same thing, but they feel the way you do. Interesting. That's power, my friends. That's power. That's 13,000 to 1. So suppose we have a million people. Suppose we have 10 million people. Suppose we have a hundred million people saying, don't you dare. Now, Congress has one rule above all others. Anybody know what it is? Get reelected. Re That's the primary rule, the prime directive, as a Isaac Asimov would have called it. The prime directive is to get reelected. Now, Deshaies was passed, you may remember, by unanimous congressional consent. Was that because one morning all members of Congress woke up and said, I see the light. Nutrients are better than drugs. No. no. They said, oh, if I don't go along with this, I'll never be reelected to anything. You were at critical mass. Remember, we were out on the streets, and we were up on our hind legs, and we were making noise. And we were rallying, and we were writing letters, and we said, don't you dare take away my health freedom. Remember? And we won. Except we got fat, dumb, and lazy and stopped protecting ourselves. So now we're in the same place again. Except it's all food instead of just nutrients. So that's point number one. Use the freedom mouse. Ride the freedom mouse. We made it as easy as possible on the site. Sign up for the emails. I will never sell your information to anyone, I promise. I will never rent it. I will never share it. You'll only get email from me. And we need you to know what's going on. So I'll send you email blasts. I'll send you uh, things that you can do or not. You know, it's your choice. Get everybody you know informed. Now, what else can you do? Well, we're going to write a series of Codex alternative guidelines. Everything bad in Codex will have an alternative guideline that turns it into a pro health guideline. What have we done with the guideline, the vitamin and mineral guideline? You can see that because we have a markup copy that has their guideline crossed out and ours written in on the websites right there. What we've done is turn it into something, into a guideline that mandates biochemically, individually determined optimal health. And it's still Codex compliant. So we said, OK, now we need Congress to adopt this. And we need other countries in the world to adopt this. So uh, Bert and I went to Washington, DC. And we met with Dana Rohrabacher from Orange County, 
who said to us, he's a uh, representative, he said, I believe in pesticides. I went, ooh. He said, I believe in GMOs. I went, ooh, ooh. He said, I believe in irradiation of food. I went, ooh, ooh, ooh. But, he said, I believe in your right to not be forced to eat foods that have been processed that way more than I believe in those technologies. I will take this on. We said, oh, that's really nice. <laughs> and he said, now, we need a coalition. So we went across the aisle, or across the office building, to see Peter DeFazio's staff from Oregon, who is a liberal Democrat, whereas uh, uh, Rohrabacher is a Republican, a libertarian Republican. And DeFazio's on board. And we have large numbers of others who actually never heard of Codex before we told them about it. Never heard of Codex. We have called every health legislative aid in Congress. And we have said, what's your congressman's position on Codex? And they've said, blah. <laughs> we have spoken to the trade legislative assistants. We've said, what's your congressman's position on Codex? And they've said, a what? They don't know. We had a congressional briefing set up on the 20th of September. I was going to address Congress, tell them about it. I thought that was cool. Ten days before, it became a briefing on something else. Another freedom click. You need to write to Congress on the site and tell them that they need a congressional briefing, by God, and tell them you want me to brief them. They don't know. They've never heard of it any more than the general public has heard of it. Gee, how'd that happen? Who knows? Every negative part of Codex can be overturned by a guideline, a regulation, or a standard that is positive. So we need your help, because the United States leadership in this guideline and all the positive guidelines to follow is what's going to literally save the population of the planet and save your jobs, and your children, and your families, and mine. Thank you.